Hey guys, today we're going to find out which country drinks the most. There are a lot of candidates and a lot of people saying, yeah, in my country we really drink. But is that true? We're going to find out today. We're going to build a dashboard that is tracing the beer consumption and the wine consumption around the world. So we can switch between the beer servings and the wine servings, and we can see that our map is changing. We can also see the absolute numbers per country, and we have a nice bar color on the right. So it's an easy project and it should take us like 50 lines of code to do it. So if you want to find out which one drinks the most, stay tuned. Okay, so let's start by installing the necessary dependencies. So let's start by pip install and we need to install dash. We need to install dash core components. We need to type dash HTML components. We also need to install requests, standard library, pandas. And I think that's it. So just run it. It's going to take a while. And in the meanwhile, we can start by creating our file. So let's call it uh, app.py. And let's start by importing like all the necessary dependencies. So import dash, let's import dash core components as DCC. Let's import dash HTML components as HTML. And let's import pandas as PD for now. Yeah, and we also need from dash dot dependencies. Let's import inputs and outputs. And yeah, we have a typo here. And we should be good to go. We also need to import like our graph library. So we can do it now. We can just import plotly dot express as px. And we can start by initializing our app. So our app, it's going to be uh, dash dot dash. And be aware of the second D is capitalized. We can start by giving it a layout. And our layout is just going to be a empty HTML div for now. Our entire content, it's going to live inside this div. And finally, let's just run the server. So our app.run server, we can just set the debug flag equals to true to get some nice error handler. And uh, yeah, that's everything. We can just see if our app is running. So just write Python and then the name of the file. So in my case, it's app.py. So let's run it. Um, yeah, so I have like this address already in use. So let's try again. And yeah, we can see that we have an empty dashboard. Cool. So the next step is actually to get our data. We're going to use uh, a lot of requests to get our data and we need two main data sources. So we need to get the ISO codes to convert the country names to the ISO codes. And we need to get uh, the beer and wine uh, data, okay? So let's start by the beer and wine data. Um, you can get, grab the URL from the link uh, below, but I'm just going to copy paste it for now. And our data is living inside of datahub.io, okay? So it's alcohol consumption, and you can find it in the description below. So now that we have that, we can use pandas to actually handle our uh, HTML request, right? Our HTTP request. So we're just going to say that PD, uh, panda pd uh, read CSV. And if we pass the URL, pandas is going to the location and it's going to grab the file for us. So it's very handy. And if we want to print like our uh, DF, just to make sure that we have the right one, we can do it. So let's run again the same file. 
and here we go so we have our countries we are the beer servings uh, spirit servings wine servings and total liters of beer alcohol okay we just want to focus on the beer servings and the wine servings for now but you can take whatever columns you wish so the next step is to get our ISO codes and for that we also have to take like a different URL so let's grab it here it's going to be available in the link as well and the uh, ISO URL is the following okay so this is not a um, CSV file we are actually going to scrape the table from the website so if we actually go to this uh, website we can see that we have here a table and this table has the translation between the country name and the alpha 3 code so this is our ISO code the one that we are going to use so let's go back and let's actually handle this with pandas as well just to be consistent and because pandas is very good to have scrape tables so let's call it like the ISO DF and this is just going to be equals to pd.readhtml and we're going to pass like this ISO URL and we just have to grab the first item of the list because the output of this read HTML is always a list and in this case we only have a table but uh, in this case is also the first table so if we print this isodf you can see that it's going to take whoops we are missing a library so let's install it so it's lxml so let's do pip install and then lxml and after it's done we can run again our app and here we go so we have all our countries and the uh, iso codes so we are only interested on this alpha 3 code and we can actually grab it right away so we can just say that's our isodf equals isodf and then our country and we want this column okay so the next step is actually to convert our countries uh, string to lowercase because as you can see like in our alcohol data we have the countries with lowercase and in our ISO data frame we have them like with uppercase so it's just a matter of conversion it's pretty easy to do in pandas so we can just say that our um iso code iso df uh, country equals to the iso df country string str and then lower okay and just like that we have our country names in lowercase uh the first letter and that's pretty cool so the next step is actually to merge the two dfs so we can just take our main df and we can merge it with the iso df and now we have to pass two main arguments so we want to join it with which columns um so we want to merge it with the country on the iso df and here we have a capitalized C and on the normal DF on the alcohol DF we want to merge with a column called country with a small C okay so we have to actually pass this in our uh, merge method so let's say that our left on and our left is our DF we want to pass the column country now we're right on so the call the table on the right it's going to be connected with the column country with capitalized c okay and that's about it so we can just uh, actually save the df so 
we have to say that the df is equal to the df dot merge and then you know what we just wrote we can print it out and see the results yeah nice so now we have the alpha 3 code the next step is actually to drop this country because we already have like one column of country we don't need a second one with a capitalized c so let's do that so we can just say that df.drop and we're going to drop the column country with capitalized c okay we just have to pass it as a list and say that axis is equal to one and we pass the in place equals to true and here we go so now we have like our um the f without this country column okay so now that we have that we can start to work in our layout so we can start by actually give it like html that dot h1 and this is going to be our header and it's just going to say welcome to the dashboard after our header we want to have some radio items so we want to select between the beer servings and the wine servings so to do so we are going to have a, not html a dcc dot radio items and we are going to pass an id and this id is going to be radio items something like that and we have to pass the options so the options uh, are going to contain a list as always and inside that list we are going to have multiple dictionaries and our first dictionary will hold the label of um beer or beer consumption whatever you want to call it beer consumption and the value and here make sure that you actually take the exact column name so beer servings so we can just copy it okay beer servings and that's about it so we are going to do the same thing for um, the wine consumption and we're going to copy the proper column name here as well cool so we can just actually like define the default value so we can just say value equals and then we give like beer servings as the default value and that's about it the next step is to make our graph so let's just go out here uh, i think yeah no we are good and we can start to write our graph so we can pass a dcc.graph item and this uh, item is going to have like an id of just graph or whatever you want to call it and here we have to pass a fi figure right and we have to define a figure so this figure is going to be our map map and our map is still to be defined okay so we can create a function to define our map we can call it like make map or <laughs> wherever and here we can just uh we, we want to pass an uh, argument and this argument is going to be the column because we are going to change this map when we click in our radio items like if we select our beer consumption we would like to have like a map showing the beer results but if we click on the wine consumption we would like to have a map showing the wine consumption results okay so let's give it a default value for the beer servings and uh, let's put beer here and now we can just start by saying that our figure is equal to px for the plotly express and now we are going to use the path method okay and we're going to pass our df our data frame our merge data frame and inside we are going to pass the locations and our locations are, are our uh, alpha 3 code so we can just copy paste it here 
and we can move for the color and the color is our column so basically plotly is asking us okay so i have the entire data i know that you want to separate like the data by the locations and now how can we separate the the colors so which values should we use to separate uh, the countries right and we want to use like the um, beer servings by default but we may want to use the wine servings as well okay so we're just going to pass column the argument not a string so yeah uh okay and now that's basically it you can also pass just to make a fancier uh, map uh, over name okay and the over name not over over uh the over name it's going to be just the country so every time that you over um in your map and you are overing between like two countries or one country you're going to have like the correct name there so after that we just want to update our layout so we can just use the update layout method and we are using to change the margin because as far as i know there's no good way to change the map size without using css and in this tutorial we are just trying to focus on the plotly and dash uh, components so we are going to use um, like a workaround to make our graph a bit bigger so we are going to take the margins out and to do so we have to define our margin and our margin has to be passed as a dictionary and it's going to contain the left margin equals to zero the right margin equals to zero the top margin zero and the bottom margin a zero okay this is going to gain a bit of spice and that's about it for our graph we can just return our figure then we can grab our function go to our figure here and we can just call it okay and this is enough to actually have something displayed so if we don't have any typos we should be able to open our dashboard and see like two buttons two radio buttons and a nice graph now the thing is when you click in the wine consumption or the beer consumption when you switch between the radio items nothing happens and this is our next step so we have to build a logic to actually make this part interactive it we are almost here now it's just a few more lines of code but we have to use the callbacks so we can just say app.callback and in our callbacks we have to pass output that we already imported up here from the dependencies so don't forget to import it and from the output um we have to pass like the id of our it uh, item right the output item so our output item it's going to be our graph and we are going to pass the figure as the item to be outputted okay so here we are calling the function make map but down here we are going to pass like an output for the figure and in our callback we also have to define our input and our input it's going to be our radio items so we can just copy it here and it's going to be the value so when you click beer consumption you're going to have the beer servings as an input value and that's about it we can just write a simple function to uh, render the graph we have to pass one argument because that's the way it is uh, we have the input from the radio item so it's only one argument and now we can just return the make graph or make map function and we can just pass this argument because we're going to click on the beer consumption we are going to get the the value beer servings we are going to pass this value here on the render graph that is going to pass the value to the make map okay and in the make map we have the, the argument column that is going to change our figure here and it's going to show us whatever uh, value we picked on the radio items 
So our final graph should be interactive by now. We can just run our app again and see our results. Okay. We can see that we have a small error. And uh, our error is because we should pass like this as a list, probably. So let's try again. Let's refresh this. Yeah, here we go. So we can see that our map is now interactive. And we can see that in China, the beer servings is 79. But when we click in our wine consumption, the entire map changes. Okay. So yeah. And now it's time to see the final winners, right? So for the wine consumption, it seems that France is the winner. But Portugal is also on the top. I'm a bit surprised. So these are the two biggest wine consumptions or biggest winners on the wine consumption. And on the beer consumption, we have Germany and Poland. Yeah. We also have Namibia that is, seems to be actually even higher than Germany and Poland. Okay, so this is our winner. Yeah. So hope you guys liked the tutorial. It was a short one. So see you around.